we were all pretty dissatisfied with the way that that book ended, right? The Well, I'm the only one who like really read it, but at least, you know, I didn't feel good about it. And what I told you of it was pretty unsatisfying, right? Mm-hmm. That's, mm-hmm. that's fair to say. I wasn't okay. expecting that much, but yeah, it was it was not that great. Well, I decided in a moment of inspiration the other night, I decided to try my hand at concluding ambitions in a more satisfying way. And uh, well, I guess I, to tell you specifically, there was a point in ambitions where Christina got missing and Andy remembered that he received an email from her where she said if she were to murder her parents, <laughs> she would uh, run away for a few days first. So Andy went and told the detective that he had this email. And this is the point in the narrative where I will diverge and create an alternate ambitions timeline that ends in a, uh, well, I guess I'll wait until you hear it, but I think you're going to like this better. All right. So starting from that point, I'm a real piece of shit. Andy Palinkas said aloud to himself on the sidewalk outside of the police station. (laughs) He had just betrayed his only teen friend to the cops. (laughs) He prayed that she never found out, or failing that, that she would forgive him and still consider him as a potential mate. He knew in his heart that he had at most five years left to live. Just five (laughs) short years remaining to accomplish his only true goal in life. Sure, he owned a successful business, a single-digit number of friends, and a negative reputation. But he was still longing for one last thing. One last push in that boulder would finally reach the summit. He needed a child bride. (laughs) <laughs> oh no <laughs> detective sergeant tom brown sat at his desk in silence for a full minute after andy Polinkus left his office he couldn't believe his luck this stupid old creep just waltzed in and gave up everything hey johnson brown yelled to his colleague down the hall have you checked out that bisexual teenager's computer yet come on brown you know the chief's got me on pull over every black man i see duty all oh, week God. We have a quota to meet, and he'll have my ass if we don't fill every jail cell in the county by the end of the month. It's an election year. Johnson, if we find what I think we'll find in that inbox, it won't matter whose ass the chief eats. It'll be you and me on those ballots on election day, with an unprecedented two-person gubernatorial candidacy. We need a warrant on Andy Palinkas' home PC ASAP. That means as soon as possible. And the other acronym means personal computer. (laughs) Were you going to ask me something before I barreled on through? (laughs) Yeah, I was wondering, is this the part, I mean, does does the book turn into more of like a to catch a predator kind of entrapment? That's part of it. But um, I've got, you know how there were multiple storylines weaved within the the full tapestry, the full picture of ambitions. And I'm trying to continue all of it and really tie it all together. I'm a real piece of shit, Andy Palinka said aloud to himself behind the register at Rosen's. (laughs) His only customer, Marty Richards, raised an eyebrow. Andy quickly averted his gaze and stared at his own shoes. He knew better than to cross Marty Richards. Marty, like all gay men, held a certain power over all straight men. (laughs) If rumors started circulating that Andy was a bit on the funny side, that was it. His life would be over. Marty, please, just take whatever you want and go. I don't want any trouble, Andy muttered meekly. Ha ha, what's the matter, Andy? Afraid I'll ruin your life like all the others? (laughs) Of course I'm afraid. Please, spare me. (laughs) Marty began cackling gaily when suddenly the big front window of Rosen shattered. Two teens jumped through. Andy, in a moment of cowardice, pressed the panic button under his desk. He reminded himself of a woman with how scared he was. (laughs) (laughs) Palinkas, I know what you did, Christine shouted in what seemed like multiple voices. How was she doing that with her voice? It sounded like a chorus of at least six Christines covering a wider range of the pitch spectrum than Andy thought humanly possible. Could this be what she was learning in her voice lessons? (laughs) What? You spoke with Sergeant Brown already? Andy cried. No, you stupid old man. Evil Leia scoffed at the pathetic businessman hiding behind his cash register. We're telepathic now. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> we ran away to perform dark magic rituals in the woods with a powerful witch who's been living among us here in State City. You might recognize her. And her enormous mouth. <laughs> oh, wow. Damn. <laughs> Christine smirked as she said this last part. And he felt a presence approaching behind him. He turned quickly and saw Tanya standing in the doorway to Rosen's back office. Her eyes Is she glowing gonna green. Him? <laughs> <laughs> Unhinge her jaw and like <laughs> A figure stood just behind her in the shadows. In the darkness, Andy could just barely make out the silhouette of Tanya's former boyfriend. What was his name? Even in this moment of terror, he quickly shuffled through his mental Rolodex. His name is Gareth Rosa, Tanya snapped. <laughs> she was telepathic too, of course. <laughs> or should I say, his name was Gareth Rosa. Gareth stepped forward and Andy gasped in fright. It sounded like how a woman would gasp. <laughs> the young Mr. Rosa's skin was gray and covered with dirt and filth. His eyes had no pupils or irises. What had once been such a pretty young boy was now a reanimated corpse of a pretty young boy. Andy's heart jumped once more when he noticed what was in zombie Gareth's cold, dead hands. A pump-action Mossberg pointed straight at him. <laughs> Chekhov's Mossberg! <laughs> Hell yeah, the gun! <laughs> it's actually being used this time. <laughs> we made a little trip to Centerville this morning to check off this little Chekhov. <laughs> Christine looked extremely pleased with her wordplay. <laughs> Come quietly, Mr. P. 